Hi, I'm Kevin Hill. Welcome back to another episode of our beautiful autumn painting together with a nice bridge. Now today we're going to actually work on our autumn trees and make it really colorful and pretty. And of course, if you're enjoying these, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos. Let's get started. We'll start today with our filbert and some yellow and red. And of course, my palette's dirty as usual because I was filming earlier today. Now, so you guys voted last week for, for some you know, layers of trees working forward. And that's really cool. Glad we're going to do it. So this is dry. Let's get started painting our trees. So here we go right at the top. Now I'm going to put a little color back here because it's a little on the, a little on the brown side. <laughs> we probably don't want that. Uh, which way is the lights coming across like this? I remember now. I couldn't remember for a second. <laughs> there we go. It's pretty bad when you forget where the light's coming from. You got to know that. Okay, so now what I'm doing, we're just sort of mapping out where we want our, our trees and you're going to want to use all sorts of colors. See, I just grabbed a little brown that works real well with our red to create some, some nice colors, some nice tones that we can use in here. And you just use this over and over and over again until you create your beautiful tree shapes. I like that. Look at how the red contrasts against the blue. Isn't that cool? That is what we call good stuff. All right, maybe over here. I want to start just maybe just touching, and layering on a little bit, so you can use the use the dry texture of the canvas as a as a little help help for you. See how you can just swirl because it's dry. Normally you'd be kind of tapping at this point probably, but you know it gives you a different different technique. Similar effect. This is kind of a dry brush blending technique. This would be something that uh, if you're an acrylic painter, you would have this technique out all the time. All right. A little bit of color. Oh, that's so pretty. See how we're going to layer the trees. That's what you guys wanted, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to work to create as much layering as possible. Before we go too far with these trees, too far down, I want to, I want to slice in a little dirt here. See, I've just got a, a little brown, a little yellow in my brush. That's about all it takes. And there we go. See that? Just get some dirt in there. And of course, of course, you're going to want to go darker as you go down and you want to throw a little red in there as you go down because red is a foreground color. It looks good in the foreground. There. Scrub in this dirt and then what we'll do is we'll have, we'll have a little sharpening up to do of this bridge, which will be fun. So for now, just spend a couple minutes on this. Now with our filbert, I'm going to drop in right here some of our some of our tree branches that I know we're going to need. We're going to need a lot of them. But here's the thought: as you can see, I did just a little bit of work here to the bridge. I should probably put in my little rocks again, but that's not really the point. But the point was, you know, I made it a little straighter. It was kind of crooked, but you know what? It was it was roughly done. To, in the beginning because it just didn't matter. So now we're starting to refine our painting a little. There, now that we have a little, a little bit more of a clear direction as to where we're going, uh, I do want big trees, but I should probably do everything else in the background first. So let's work on, let's work on these guys. <laughs> I say I want the big trees. You guys, got, you guys wanted the, you guys wanted the big trees. There, so I'm going to do them. <laughs> it's fun. All right, lots and lots and lots of tree limbs in here because we want the, the appearance of a lot of trees in our little forest here. We don't want just a couple because we, we need it to feel layered, you know, different layers. And that's important to, to create depth. One tree is not going to cut it. That's a crooked one, isn't it? Oh, yeah, look at that. Now they're starting to really feel... I feel like they belong in that forest that we're making. We're making a forest up here. It's super fun. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I like that guy. Maybe we'll, when we just we frame these, maybe, maybe we'll cover that with a frame. I don't know, but he's kind of fun to paint in there. So, all right, a couple on this one. And these are just a touch more distinct than those. There. Just a touch. Now I'm going to go ahead with my little detail round brush. And, and highlight some of these trees using the detail round, not so much because I want detail, but because it's so soft, it just creates nice, nice little soft effects, which work well in the background. I'm not creating individual leaves. I'm just using touches of color to create a, a, a large form that kind of suggests that maybe there's a leaf there 
or highlight out on these leaves there. See how that works? Pretty simple, but you know, effective, really. There, and these guys for sure have to have some. I just love, absolutely love the, the play of the cool against the warm. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> Super cool. So I think that's a lot of fun. And now we are going to be taking this cool color and popping it in the bridge, in the back of the trees, in the water. So it's going to feel super balanced. So no worries, it looks a little unbalanced. So just ignore that for a minute. <laughs> or possibly for a couple, couple of weeks. Just depends on when we can get there. Now I'm going to go ahead and load up our two inch brush with some blue. And as I recall last time, I think we put a little black into that color. Maybe a touch of red. I think we did. I don't usually put red. I don't usually don't put black into blue without red. Otherwise, it kind of tends to maybe give you a little bit of a green cast. So if I remember right, I think that's what we did up there. Anyways, if I don't remember right, I'll make it similar anyways. There. <laughs> Drop this right in. I'm only worried about the center. Now oh, it looks like I need more red. There. And I can play with this color and get it perfectly later. I'm just kind of throwing it in. Should have probably done it. Should have just coated a lot of this down when we were doing the sky, but oh well. There. Okay, so that's sort of the general thought. Like I said, I'll fix the color. And then what I really want to do is let me grab a smaller brush and grab some of our browns. And I'm going to take these browns and reflect them into the water. And that way it kind of creates a, a beautiful look. Let me do the, the browns and then I'll come back and show you the, the bridge because I know you'll want to see that. All right, so as you can see, I've just spent two seconds here getting a, a basic idea of how this, in fact, it looks like I need to drop it down just a little here, of how that needs to be shaped. I could care less about, you know, other things over it, it doesn't matter. Okay, so let me get us a color and let's use this color to just simply do our best to, to mimic. Again, over here, I realized that, that we probably won't see all of this area. We'll do our best to mimic what we have up there. I did get that water sorted out. You see it really just needed a little more red in it. That fixed it and now it looks good. So it always, if, if your colors don't work for you, please don't panic. It's easy. It's easy to make adjustments to colors. People panic about color. Color is easy. Just practice and you'll understand what each color does and then you'll know what to do when things don't work out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's kind of my loose, gentle, soft underpainting. And again, we'll make the colors, you know, we'll, we'll make the colors work better with the highlights. Because remember, I'm just looking at the underpainting, trying to get a feel for what I did there. Good stuff. Okay. This is all easily changed. So let me just stop right there. And let me go ahead and take a little detail round. Grab some of this. And I'm going to very, very loosely indicate what we did up here. And then we'll blur it all. And we may blur it in a different episode, actually. We'll see. Because we can actually put a glaze over this, and that'd be just as good. I'll maybe show you how to do a glaze. That'll be fun. Something new, kind of an acrylic technique. There. All right, well, now it's your turn to vote. So the first option that we have here today is adding a whole bunch of rocks to the water what that'll do is create just a little bit more visual interest toward the foreground, and that might be really fun to do. Or we can do a little waterfall coming forward. You know, this maybe this river is kind of fast moving, so a little waterfall might be pretty interesting, actually. Kind of disturb the reflection a little bit more, but it could be really fun to do. Or last, we could do a nice old stump, maybe a hollow stump you can kind of look down into and put a lot of detail in that. We'll overlap the bridge with it to create another layer of depth. Now, of course, with all these ideas, we'll be putting just a few more trees in and around to make it look even more like a forest. All right, well, that's really all we're going to do to our little autumn painting today. We still have a lot of work to go on it, but don't forget to go to the website and vote for how you'd like to see this painting continue. Thanks for watching.